everyone, welcome back to Design Basics. Today I thought I would show you another card. I thought this card was really cute. French script background. And what I did was I took some Whisper White cardstock, just a scrap, and I stamped it in um, basic black ink. After you punch two of them out using your scallop punch, I took them and I just balled them up. Then you take one of them and you use your scissors and you make a slit almost all the way into the center because what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of adhesive and you could do this I'm going to put the adhesive on the back so it doesn't show on the front then I'm going to overlap my flower just by one scallop if you try to move it over to two scallops it it makes it stand up nice and cute but the button in the center um, pushes on it so I'm just going to overlap it by one scallop okay just like that and then this flower, the top of this um, piece, is going to nestle on top of the other one. And the way we're going to hold that is just with a couple glue dots. I like to put my glue dots on with, with whatever I'm going to be, with, pick it up with my cardstock. You could pick it up with a pair and tip of scissors, various things. Alright, I'll say that and then this one doesn't want to pick up. Of course it's stuck to my thumb. Okay, now since this is words, I am going to pay a little bit of attention to the direction, so I don't have one going one direction and one going the other direction. There we go. Now that it's stuck on, I have this cute little flower. Okay, just like that. And by virtue of cutting it and overlapping it, it makes it stand up a little bit, which is fun. Okay, so let me show you how to make the button that goes in the center to the side. If you take, you could use a regular black button if you want. I don't have any black buttons. And so if you take a three quarter inch circle punch and you punch six, you need six circles out of black or whatever color you're going to use. Take six and you need to stick those together. You can use the Tombow Multi again or you could just use the mono adhesive which is what I did. Okay, so pretend this is six stacked on top of each other. Then you can mark it, and I actually used, and I'll use it for you guys as well so you'll be able to see it easier. I use my white gel pen to make my holes to see where to punch. Now you'll need to, because there's six of these, it's really thick, you'll want to use your crocodile to punch those. And again, the reason I put the dots on there is so that I can look through this hole in the crocodile to see where to punch. Okay, around so I can hold it with this hand. So just go ahead and punch two holes, and that makes a cute little button. And then what I did was I took a tiny strip of white cardstock. Here's one. Just take a tiny little strip. You could use some thread, um, some embroidery thread or floss, and use that instead. But if you just take a tiny little sliver of white cardstock, you can also put that in the hole and it gives you the impression of having a button without using thread and then the best way to hold this in place is to either use again some Tombow Multi or you can use some mono adhesive and then just fold one side over the other one and then you'll need to put more combo but you're going to want to cut this once it gets folded so you don't see it through the back side and don't worry about seeing the the mono adhesive on the other side because you won't be able to see it you won't see the back of the button once you have it on okay so that's what I did here the only difference is is that this one has six layers can you see how nice and thick that is now I'm going to use again some glue dots a couple of those to hold my button in place in the center of my flower. And then once that's in place, you can go back and bend your petals up if you want. Just gives it a little bit more dimension. And so there's our little flower. Isn't that cute? Okay, so let's finish up our card. Move some of this out of the way. 
I took a piece of So Saffron. This is just a scratch piece. That's why this little notch is out right here. And this is going to go on the side of my card. And again, I told you that I didn't have the um, medallion background stamp that they used. So I just used one of my um, beautiful bouquet, I think it's called, texture plates. Put my cardstock in and ran that through. And if you want these flowers to stand out just a little bit more, if you will take... Let me grab a sanding block. If you'll take one of our sanding blocks and go over where the flower is, because this is raised, you'll be able to bring out some of the texture. So, pull that off. Can you see that a little bit better? It also adds some nice texture to it, which I like. But it makes it just a shade lighter. And the darker your cardstock, the more that technique will stand out. So, let's take a piece of Old Olive. This is just another strip, and I'm going to put some adhesive on it a few places. This is two and a half inches long. You can make it as long as you want, depending on how far up you want your flower to be. Just going to lay that down, make sure it's straight. And then, I need to tie on my ribbon. This is a piece of old olive gross grain. If you feel like any of your gross grain ribbons are stiff, which I feel like this old olive one tends to be more stiff than my other ones, if you'll run it through your fingers just with the, your fingernail, it'll um, soften it up a little bit so it makes it much more pliable. Okay, and now I need to punch a hole here for to tie my knot and my mat turn it this way so hopefully you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to come down a couple, maybe an inch and make a hole. And because my ribbon has to go through this, just give your piercing tool a twist and that will make that hole a little bit bigger so you'll be able to get the ribbon through. I'm going to go in the front and then come back through the back side. It also helps if you cut your ribbon at an angle. Just like that. See how that's what I'm talking about, cutting your ribbon at an angle. Make it easier to stick through. Okay. Give this a little knot. And what this ribbon then creates is the illusion of having leaves on your stem. And cut that off. There you go. So, And you can slide that over if you need to. So there's our stem with our leaves. Now let's take this yellow piece of So Saffron adhesive on the inside of my card. For the same reason I um, did it earlier so that it doesn't show in case I get it too far and so just line that up. Okay, so there we go. Now the only thing that's missing is our flower and our greeting. So let me show you how to, st let's stick this on with a couple glue dots. And flatten that all the way around just to make sure you get it adhered wherever the glue dots are and then you can go back and pull the petals up on that inside flower to make it just the right height the way you want it. Isn't that cute? I just think that's adorable. Now the only thing that's missing is our greeting and I'm going to use <coughs> the greeting from Teeny Tiny Wishes. You probably think that's the only greeting stamp I have. It's not, but I really do like it. And there you have it. A cute little thinking of you card that I put my own twist on. Thanks for joining me for Design Basics and I'll see you next time.